I should be writing season 19, episode 26. Well, I should be writing. I should be working on my Hi there, welcome to I Should Be Writing. This is the podcast for wannabe fiction writers, and I am your host, Mer Lafferty. I have been podcasting since 2005. I have been writing fiction and being traditionally published since 2013, I guess. And I'm still trying to give writing advice, and I'm still trying to learn from my own advice. As for what I've been up to, I'm, I've spent my time struggling with getting a good podcast flow going. It's a lot of work, but I'm enjoying it, and I'll discuss more of that later today. I've been writing a little bit on one project and a little bit on another project. Not a lot. Getting stuff down on the page. What I'm reading now is I'm still doing Savage Crowns by Matt Wallace, and I'm reading Death and Gondola, which I don't remember who wrote that, so I should probably go find that book. I'll find it. It'll be in the show notes. It's a cozy murder mystery in a mountain town ski resort with a gondola. And the gondola does feature. I want to preface this episode with, I am just trying to be honest here. I'm not trying to look for, I'm not fishing for sympathy or validation. But what I'm doing is, um, I'll tell you how it started. I was going through the grocery store yesterday and I wasn't, wasn't feeling great yesterday. And I was grocery shopping and I thought about the work I'd done that day. And I thought, God, that sucked. I really suck at writing. And then I thought, what would I say if any of my listeners said that to me? And I would not allow you guys to be so cruel to yourselves. So then I thought maybe I'll do a co-writing session. Like, does your writing suck? Mine does too. Come hang out with me, which I still might do. But I am in a deep funk right now. And the reason why I'm telling you this is so you'll know that when you get in a deep funk and you consider quitting, you're not alone. And they're just emotions. I feel like what I write is garbage, or the things I'm writing moving forward are garbage. And I'll never be that good again. I think my ideas are kitschy is the wrong word. Trite. I don't know. But I'm not feeling very good about myself or my work today. And I know these are emotions and I know they'll pass. But when you feel like this, a good step is acknowledging it. Guys, I'm almost 50 years old and I've learned right now that you don't, don't, don't fight emotions. Just acknowledge them, process them. And you know, if they're bad emotions, or they're rather emotions you want to act upon, when you probably know better, don't act upon them. But acknowledge them, because the more you try to deny them, the more they'll just stick their ugly little heads up. But there's so, I, I'm not a doctor, but I know there's so much crap going on inside you right now. There's hormones. There's blood sugar. Are you dehydrated? Did you sleep enough? Are you processing another grief subconsciously that you don't even think about? But maybe if you lost someone special to you a month ago, or maybe a year ago on the anniversary, your body may be rem remembering and you might not be. It'd be nice to say our emotions are reality. Because then we'd have a really clear view of reality, wouldn't we? But that's not the case. So you need to remember that. And I need to remember that. And maybe what I write is crap, but I'll never know unless I write it. And therein, I think, lies the key. It's not even allow yourself to write crappy first drafts. It's a pro thinks they suck, but they write it anyway. And there's your deep thought for the day. Because I'm trying to be a pro. I really am. But today's a dark day, and I'm just going to try to be kind to myself. I'm trying to do the self-care, even though there's nothing. It's just, you're, when I feel like this, my mind turns into a toddler. And I want to say, no, yoga or meditation or journaling won't help me. No, a healthy breakfast is not better than a candy bar or just taking my ADHD meds without food and then not having an appetite all day until I'm utterly hangry at 3 p.m. When you're a toddler, you don't really want to admit that something simple will help you because then that invalidates your great rage and you want your rage validated. And I want my melancholy validated, so... I don't want to eat breakfast, and I don't want to do yoga, and I don't want to journal. 
But luckily, the toddler's inside, but the adult's on the outside. So I got up, I did some chores, I did some yoga. I have a small breakfast in front of me. Not huge, but a small one. Days like today is when you want to let the autopilot take over. And not the autopilot that just says, okay, straight to the couch, to the TV. The autopilot is, well, th this is the work that we do, so we're going to do it. There's more on the ditch digger side of things, where you still have to dig the ditches even if you feel like crap. I'm remembering something that I had to tell my kid once. It's a combination of something a friend of mine said to me in college and something Cory Doctorow once said. And what Cory said was a lot more eloquent than what I remember. I know he said it much better than I will, but when it comes to being socially shy, putting yourself out there in any way, and that includes writing a story, approaching somebody at a party. I'm not even talking about hitting on somebody, just to find someone to talk to. Putting a podcast out. What Corey told me was uh, when I told him that somebody had, had essentially hurt my feelings. Didn't quite say it like that, but he just said, look, especially among science fiction geeks, don't attribute malice where there's just inattentiveness. Uh, inattentiveness. Inattentiveness was not the word, but essentially, you know, you think, since you're the center of your world, the way everybody acts around you has something to do with you. So if they're not paying attention to you, then they're actively not paying attention to you. And you're forgetting that they're the center of their own world. And they may not be thinking about you at all, which is its own little barb. But we're not going to talk about that this time. We're talking about the fact that if people aren't inviting you into a group that's not invite only, you can probably just go up and do it. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is I realized yesterday, again, I was feeling low yesterday as well. I realized that I'd slacked off on my Twitch streaming. And I think it's because I was no longer doing the live podcast. And once I stopped doing the live podcast, my numbers went down. Now, my numbers on Twitch, they were humbling. My numbers in podcasting are okay, but my numbers in Twitch are tiny. But, you know, when you get used to 20 and it drops to 8, then that's still pretty annoying. And I got to feeling like no one cared. Again, I'll remind you what I said at the beginning. I'm not fishing for validation or sympathy. I'm just telling you what I was feeling. I was feeling like no one cared. And part of me is worrying about all the work I'm doing to do the transcriptions and get three podcasts out a week. And yes, I know I have all the supporters on Patreon and Substack and Twitch, and but my brain doesn't see that. My brain wants like to hear every episode. Wow, wow, good job, Mer. And that's not realistic because how many times do I listen to a podcast and not respond? almost all of them. And what I had to tell my kid and what a friend of mine had to tell me in college, which was, look, people are not going to run after you to join their group. They've got enough things to worry about. They want to gather and hang out and have fun. And if you're too shy to go over there, that's your problem. And it, it, it kind of hurt at the time, but now I'm just thinking it's freeing because it's thinking if you, if you don't if you're not invited, you think no one wants you, and that's not the case. If you're not invited, that means, well, they didn't think to invite you, which kind of sucks, but the way to get into their head so they'll invite you next time is to go say hello. And I'm an instant gratification kind of person, so when I change something in the podcast, I want instant validation. And that's not rational. It's not realistic. And honestly, if I want people to respond to my content, I have to keep making it and keep making it consistently. So if I want to build a streaming audience, I have to stream. Deciding not to and feeling like, wow, no one said, oh darn, there wasn't a stream today. That's not, that's, it's putting myself in the center of my world a little too much. And I don't like that. And you know, the folks in the Patreon and the people do give me feedback. That's the weird thing. I don't know, I really don't know what my toddler brain is wanting when I'm just like, I'm getting feedback. People like it. And I'm going to continue doing the new stuff I'm doing for the podcast because it's the right thing to do. Transcriptions are an accessibility feature that I want to offer. Whether anybody downloads it or cares, that's on the audience's side, not mine. 
So as I'm reminding myself of this, I want you to take away a couple of things. One, I know you've felt like this at some time or another. You could be feeling it now if you're hanging out in the Discord and not feeling very confident to say anything. You might be feeling it it at work, wondering, well, (laughs) so many people are working from home. But if you do go to work and have people to, there are people who have lunch together, maybe they're not actively avoiding you if they don't invite you. Maybe you can just invite someone else. If you're looking to write a book, very few people are going to run after you and go, hey, what about that book you were going to write? I want to read it. Some might, but that's not something you count on. You can't count on other people to make you happy. You can't count on other people to make you, to validate your artwork, which is really hard and I'm still struggling with it, but I have to write the stories I want to write, no matter what anybody else says. And I don't even get that bad of feedback. I just get, you know, not a lot of feedback. But but if you keep making stuff, people will probably notice. I can't promise anything. Can't guarantee anything. But I do know that everybody else has their own life. And if they take the moment to listen to my stuff or read my stuff... Whether they say anything about it or not, that's a big win for me. Because you did take time out to listen to this. And that means the world. But people will notice you more. And I'm talking on a social level. I'm talking on a creative level. People will notice you more if you make noise. If you go up and say hello. If you haven't been specifically uninvited to something. And you show up. And if I'm wrong and they didn't want you there in the first place, just say, my bad, I heard it on a podcast. But I've said it before that when you're starting out, it hurts that nobody cares that you're writing. But it's also very freeing that nobody cares what you're writing because you can write whatever you want. So when you're feeling down that no one cares what you're writing, well, then write something that you know they're not going to care about. (laughs) I don't know if that's a good point or not. I'm just saying, try something new, try something fun. And that's what I'm going to do. I am about to download some interactive fiction software to play around with that. I don't have an interview for you this week. I think adding an interview onto all of this is a lot. So I'm not sure I'm going to be doing that. But I do have, uh, if you check out Ditch Diggers, we do have my agent Seth Fishman on to talk about a variety of things from children's book publishing, because he's also an author, to how to uh, vet your possible agents. And that's my other podcast called Ditch Diggers. And I want to say it a third time, just in case, I'm not looking, I'm not fishing for validation or compliments or sympathy. I just want to tell you how I feel because I'll bet money that most of you have felt this way in one time or another. It's not that nobody cares about you or what you're making. It's just that they haven't thought about it. And the way to get them to think about it is to make noise. Now I'm going to do my best to take this melancholia and listen to everything I just said and go do some work. Because this podcast is really for me. This specific one. Because I'm hoping if I say it all out loud, I'll believe it too. And I don't want to be a hypocrite and tell you guys, oh wow, if you just think nobody cares, I don't care, write it anyway. Well, I am saying that, but I'm also saying you're not the only one who feels that way. And I do too. And I need to follow my own advice. So if you want to find me, ask me any questions about writing, go to merverse.com or mightymer at gmail.com. I'm kind of on social media. I don't know. But I'm Mighty Mer on most places. I am supported by a lot of awesome people via Patreon. And if you would like to get some exclusive stuff and early podcasts and access to all the archives and annotated transcripts as I move forward... You can join at patreon.com slash mightymer, or you can subscribe at Substack for, uh, to get the early in and to get all that stuff. I've, I've, if you do the monetary subscription at Substack, I've added on sending out all that stuff to you too. But you know, crap happens. You're going to have bad days. I'm going to have bad days and we keep moving. You got this. I got this. We'll be okay. Because you should be writing. I Should Be Writing is available to you under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. 
Theme music by John Anilio. Art by Numbers Ninja. Production by Summer Brooks. And hosting by Libsyn. Find all of this information and more at merverse.com. And remember, we can't do this without you. Thanks for your support. Doctor Who. Yeah, I'm sitting home watching Doctor Who.